nobody uh, tells people who are beginners, and I really wish somebody had told this to me, is that um, if you're watching this video, you, somebody wants to make videos, right? And all of us who do creative work, like, you know, we get into it. And we get into it because we have good taste. Do you know what I mean? Like, you want to make TV because you love TV. You know what I mean? Because there's stuff that you just, like, love. Okay? So you've got really good taste. And you get into this thing that, that I don't even know how to describe, but it's like there's a gap. That for the first couple of years that you're making stuff, what you're making isn't so good. Okay? It's not that great. It's, it's really not that great. It's, it's trying to be good. It has ambition to be good, but it's not quite that good. But your taste... The thing that got you into the game, your, your taste is still killer. And your taste is good enough that you can tell that what you're making is kind of a disappointment to you. You know what I mean? Like, you can tell that it's still sort of crappy. A lot of people never get past that phase. A lot of people at that point, they quit. And the thing I, I would just, like, say to you with all my heart is that m most everybody I know who does interesting creative work, they went through a phase of years where they had really good taste, they could tell what they were making wasn't as good as they wanted it to be. They knew it felt short, you know, and, and, and like, and some of us can admit that to ourselves, and some of us are a little less able to admit that to ourselves. But we knew, like, it didn't have this special thing that we wanted it to have. And the thing I would say to you is, everybody goes through that. And for you to go through it, if you're going through it right now, if you're just getting out of that phase, or if you're just starting off and you're entering into that phase, you got to know it's totally normal. And the most important possible thing you could do is do a lot of work. Do a huge volume of work. Put yourself on a deadline so that every week or every month you know you're going to finish one story. You know what I mean? Whatever it's going to be. Like, you create the deadline. It's best if you have somebody who's waiting for work for you, somebody who's expecting it from you, even if it's not somebody who pays you, but that you're in a situation where you have to turn out the work. Because it's only by actually going through a volume of work that you're actually going to ca catch up and close that gap. And your the work you're making will be as good as your ambitions. In my case... Like I, I, like, I do a national radio show, right? Like, I make my living at this. I've made my living at this for a long time. And, um, and you know, won the Peabody Award, like, won all sorts of prizes. Like, like 1.7 million, 1 million people listen to our show. And, um, and they, listen f they listen almost to the entire show. Like, people love our show, right? Like, the show that I make with my, my coworkers. And, and so, like, so, like, I'm in a place, like, I've, I'm, I'm done, right? I've mastered this thing. But I got to tell you, like, like, I took longer to figure out how to do this than anybody I've ever met. I'm going to play you a, a clip of tape from, from my eighth year. Like, I started in public radio when I was 19 at NPR's network headquarters in Washington. So it was a big news organization, had a really, like, peachy set of jobs. And, like, I was always a good tape cutter, but I was a horrible reporter. I was horrible at the thing that you're setting out to do with these video pods. And um, so, so this is a tape from year eight. It's not such a long way from the local grocery store to the international debate over whether sorghum and meat production are causing corn to decline in Latin America. All right, that debate. We were just talking about that at dinner. There's a general air of prosperity here, partly thanks to Mexican imports of U.S. grains, which helped boost our farm economy. Mexico is now one of our biggest grain customers, buying a half billion to a billion dollars worth every year including corn to feed its people and sorghum to feed its livestock. Like, what am I talking about? Like, I don't even understand. Like, I wrote this. I don't even understand what it is. And, like, and, um, and, and, okay, also, like, like, every part of this is, is ill-conceived, okay? Um, like, like, the writing is horrible. You can't even follow what I'm talking about. And then the performance, like, okay, just a little tip if you're, you know, performing for broadcast. You don't underline every third word for emphasis because it sounds really unnatural. What you want to do is you want to talk the way people normally talk. Um, this helps cut our own trade deficit and benefits everyone in the U.S. economy. But in Mexico, this policy has led to fewer tortillas for the poor and unappetizing tortillas for everyone else. Again, like, this is like the most moronic kind of, like, you know, it doesn't mean anything. And, and it's hard. It's actually kind of an interesting story, which I'll say to you in a sentence, which is, um, because Mexico produces a lot of stuff that they ship to the United States, tomatoes and all sorts of really like wonderful food that we eat here, um, they don't make enough corn for their own people. That's the story. So we, because for us to get really great tomatoes or semi-great tomatoes year-round, basically Mexicans eat worse. That's the story. And it's kind of an interesting idea, right? Like that's actually sort of like a cool idea executed in the worst possible way. Okay, so this is like year eight. I'm 27 years old when this is happening. Like, I'm not a beginner. Like, I'm deep, deep into it. 
uh, and 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 I guess I'm saying like it takes a while. It's going to take you a while. It's normal to take a while, and you just have to fight your way through that. Okay? You will be fierce. You will be a warrior, and you will make things that aren't as good as you know in your heart you you want them to be, and you just make one after another. Like I think there.